My life was completely turned upside down by a phone call, which is precisely what happened. I was in Chicago on a cool fall afternoon when I noticed a strange number on my phone. I was about to disregard it, but something told me to respond. I could clearly hear the voice on the other end when I did. It was Isabella, even though years had gone. It's Isabella, she said, her voice brimming with an incomprehensible blend of formality and unidentified emotion. Isabella, I asked, attempting to maintain a calm tone. What's happening? My sister Isabella, with whom I am no longer in contact, had called to break the news that our grandma had died. Though the news was stunning in and of itself, her tone betrayed a concealed motive. With a faint undertone of sarcasm, she replied, I just wanted to let you know. I know you're busy leading a simple life. Through the phone, I could practically hear her smirking. I tried not to show how hurt I was by her words, though. I appreciate you informing me of this. I'll make plans to attend. Her remarks didn't hurt alone. They also brought back memories. Isabella was always the golden child when she was a child. She had the favor of our father and an air of charm that made everything seem to work out for her. For my part, I was frequently shunned. I did everything I could to succeed, but it didn't feel like my efforts were appreciated. I hadn't spoken to Isabella in years. I had severed my relationship with her and consequently with the rest of my family after she had taken David from me. It was more than just the betrayal. It was also how it brought attention to the unfair treatment I had always experienced. My fiancé had been David Parker. We had a future together, and he was the love of my life. That is, until Isabella entered the picture with her charming ability to manipulate people. I was saddened when David abandoned me for her. It was a betrayal that caused wounds, not just a strained relationship. There has always been discord in our household. Because of her similarity to him, Isabella had been favored by our strict and unforgiving father. Despite her compassionate nature, my mother was frequently caught in the midst. Although she made an effort to be encouraging, Isabella was obviously the favorite child from the beginning. After the breakup, I had made a new decision. I quit as an administrator in a school to devote all of my time to parenting Lily, my daughter. My spouse, John, was a loving it executive who accepted me for who I was. Our life was humble but full of love, and we lived in a nice suburban home. Our six-year-old daughter, Lily, was a constant source of joy and happiness. She was passionate about drawing, and she even had a well-liked YouTube channel where she posted her creations. Even though I was doing well in my personal life, Isabella's call evoked memories from the past. I was nervous at the prospect of going back to the family home for the funeral. It had been years since I visited, so the recollections were mixed emotions. In our family, our grandmother has always been a shining example of kindness. The only one who had given me unwavering support was she. Her passing signaled the end of an era, and now that Isabella had called, I felt as though I was being pulled back into a world that I had made an effort to escape. The following few days were spent getting ready for the trip. Anticipation and anxiety mixed together when I thought of Isabella again. It was about confronting the family issues that had influenced so much of my life, not just the funeral. Isabella's call seemed to be about more than simply the news of our grandmother's death, and I couldn't get rid of it. I was standing in front of the former family house on the day of the funeral. The house appeared just as I remembered it, untouched but with a distinct appearance. It seemed as though the walls contained the echoes of our early years, laughs and arguments, hopes and disappointments. Inside, the atmosphere was heavy with grief and nostalgia. I saw familiar faces, some filled with sorrow and others marked by hidden agendas. As I moved through the crowd, I caught sight of Isabella, her eyes scanning the room with a practiced indifference. She was surrounded by people who seemed to hang on her every word, her charm as potent as ever. I watched her with a sense of unease. Despite the years and the distance, it felt like we were still locked in the same old struggle. Isabella's presence was a stark reminder of the family dynamics that had always been a part of my life. 
In the middle of the ceremony, as the eulogies were being delivered, Isabella managed to corner me. Samantha, she said with a smile that didn't reach her eyes, it's been a while. I forced a smile in return. Yes, it has. How have you been? Oh, you know, she replied, her voice dripping with false sweetness. Life has been interesting. I could sense the undercurrent in her words, the same old rivalry that had never truly faded. As I looked at her, I realized that this reunion was not just about mourning our grandmother. It was about confronting the past, the betrayals and the choices that had shaped both of our lives. Little did I know that this encounter would set the stage for revelations that would challenge everything I thought I knew about my sister and our family. The days leading up to the funeral were filled with tension and unresolved feelings. I tried to focus on my family, John, Lily, and our daily routines, but it was impossible to ignore the looming reunion with Isabella and the family I had distanced myself from. The familiar yet painful echoes of the past were all too real. On the day of the funeral, the air was thick with grief and unresolved emotions. The family home was filled with relatives and acquaintances all paying their respects. The house, with its worn charm, seemed to watch over us like an old friend holding secrets. The walls felt heavy with the weight of past arguments, laughter, and hidden truths. As I entered the living room, I felt Isabella's eyes on me. Her presence was as imposing as ever, her polished exterior masking the deep-seated rivalry that had always existed between us. It wasn't long before she approached me again, her smile now more genuine, but still carrying an edge. I've been meaning to catch up, Isabella said, her voice carrying a note of curiosity. It's been a while since we've had a chance to talk. I forced a smile, trying to keep my emotions in check. Yes, it has been how things have been for you. Oh, you know, Isabella replied with a wave of her hand. Busy, but good. I'm sure you've heard from the family about how things have been for me. I nodded, though I wasn't entirely sure what she was referring to. The last I had heard from our parents, Isabella was living a life of luxury in Los Angeles. The stories I heard seemed to paint a picture of success and perfection, but I knew better than to take them at face value. During the wake, Isabella made a point of flaunting her perceived success. She spoke of her life in Los Angeles, her upscale lifestyle, and her supposed achievements. It was as though she was trying to outshine everyone to prove that her life was better than mine. I watched her with a mix of curiosity and irritation. I knew that beneath her confident facade lay a tangled web of lies and manipulations. It was hard to ignore how she spoke about David Parker, my former fiancé and now her ex-husband. Her casual mentions of him, her attempts to show how unaffected she was by their failed marriage, felt like salt in an old wound. David had once been the center of my world. We had been planning a future together until Isabella, with her cunning and charm, had stolen him away. The betrayal had left me heartbroken and disillusioned. Seeing Isabella flaunt her life so casually was a painful reminder of the hurt I had tried to move past. I decided to confront Isabella about the past, hoping to find some closure. As the crowd began to thin out, I pulled her aside into a quiet corner of the house. Isabella, can we talk? I asked, trying to keep my tone calm. She looked at me, her eyes narrowing slightly. Of course, what's on your mind? I need to understand why, I said, struggling to keep my voice steady. Why did you have to take David from me? What was it that made you think you could just take him away? Isabella's expression shifted from Fox cheerfulness to something colder, more calculating. Samantha, it's not about taking anything. David and I had our own connection. You just didn't see it. You manipulated him, I said, my voice rising with emotion. You knew how much I loved him. She shrugged nonchalantly. David made his own choices. You have to move on, Samantha. Life doesn't wait for anyone. Her dismissive attitude was infuriating. You never understood, did you? It wasn't just about David. It was about how you always seemed to have everything handed to you while I was left struggling. Isabella's face hardened. 
Don't blame me for your shortcomings. We all have our battles. Maybe if you had been more assertive, things would have been different. Her words felt like a stab in the dark, hitting all the old wounds that had never fully healed. I wanted to lash out, but I took a deep breath, trying to stay composed. This isn't just about David. It's about our family, the way things have always been stacked against me. Before Isabella could respond, I was interrupted by the arrival of some distant relatives. I had no choice but to step away, the confrontation unresolved. The rest of the evening was a blur of faces and condolences, but my mind was occupied with thoughts of the past and the unresolved issues between Isabella and me. The next day, as the funeral came to a close, I felt a sense of both relief and apprehension. The family dynamics were as tangled as ever, and I knew that there was more to uncover. Isabella's perfect life was beginning to crack, and I was determined to see the truth come to light. I left the funeral with a heavy heart, but a renewed sense of purpose. There was more to the story, and I was prepared to face it head on. The confrontation had set the stage for deeper revelations, and I was ready to uncover the full extent of the lies and deceptions that had shaped our lives. The days following the funeral were filled with an unsettling calm. I found myself replaying my confrontation with Isabella over and over, seeking clarity in the chaos. It was clear that the family's underlying issues were far from resolved. My mother's apology, though appreciated, did little to mend the rift that had existed for years. John and Lily were my anchor during this tumultuous time. They sensed my distress, but chose to offer comfort rather than prying into my troubles. Lily, with her innocent curiosity, continued to pour her heart into her YouTube channel, sharing her drawings with the world. Her joy was a bright spot amidst the darkness. It wasn't long before the next chapter of this saga unfolded. Isabella, ever the drama queen, took to social media to mock me subtly. Her posts were veiled in sarcasm, presenting herself as the picture of success, while implying that my life was dull and insignificant. It was frustrating to see her attempt to diminish my happiness in such a public way. That's when Lily's YouTube channel became a weapon in this battle. One evening, after a particularly cruel post from Isabella, Lily, and I decided it was time to use her platform for more than just showcasing her drawings. I helped Lily create a video that countered Isabella's lies, focusing on the positive aspects of our life and subtly addressing the falsehoods Isabella was spreading. The video, while innocent on the surface, contained enough pointed references to make it clear that we were aware of Isabella's attempts to undermine us. It quickly gained traction, and soon the comment sections of both Lily's channel and Isabella's posts were flooded with reactions. People began to see Isabella's facade for what it was, an elaborate mask hiding insecurities and deceptions. As the video went viral, Isabella's reputation started to crumble. The social media backlash was swift and harsh. Comments pointed out the discrepancies in her stories and questioned her integrity. The spotlight she had so carefully crafted was now exposing her vulnerabilities. Meanwhile, Isabella's personal life began to unravel in parallel. David, struggling with the public fallout from our confrontation and the negative attention surrounding his and Isabella's failed marriage, made a significant error at work. It led to his dismissal from his position as a software engineer. The professional and personal pressure became too much for him, and he fell into a deep spiral of self-doubt, unable to cope with the financial and emotional strain. Isabella made a drastic decision. She filed for divorce, severing the final ties with David. Their son James became a casualty of this turmoil, and due to Isabella's unstable situation, he was placed into a care facility, a stark contrast to the privileged life she had once flaunted. The family dynamics were shifting rapidly. My mother, who had always been more sympathetic to me, approached me with a heartfelt apology for the past. She admitted that her favoritism towards Isabella had been a mistake, and she acknowledged the hurt it had caused. I'm sorry for everything, everything, Samantha, she said, her eyes filled with regret. 
We should have done better by you. I see now how much pain we've caused. I appreciated her words, but the scars of the past were not easily healed. I chose to maintain a distant but cordial relationship with her, focusing on what truly mattered, my family's happiness and well-being. In the midst of these revelations, John and I decided to take a break from the chaos. We planned a joyful outing to an amusement park, a chance for Lily to enjoy herself and for us to reconnect as a family. It was a reminder of the simple joys and the love we shared. The trip was everything we needed, a day filled with laughter and bonding. It reinforced the strength of our family and highlighted the content life we had built together. It was a much-needed respite from the drama, and it reminded me of the importance of moving forward with love and support. As we enjoyed the day, I realized that while the past had its shadows, the future held the promise of light. With Isabella's downfall and the family's apologies, I felt a sense of closure. The journey was far from over, but for now, I could focus on cherishing the present and looking forward to a brighter future. The weeks after our trip to the amusement park brought a profound sense of calm. My life, once shaken by familial discord, was finding its equilibrium again. As I looked around at my little family, I realized how much we had grown through all the trials. Isabella's downfall was a hard pill to swallow, but it was a reminder of the destructive power of envy and manipulation. Her failed attempts to belittle my life had only served to bring her own downfall into the spotlight. The divorce, the loss of her son to a care facility, and her diminishing reputation were harsh consequences of the path she had chosen. David, once a part of my life and now a figure of past regrets, faced his own set of challenges. His dismissal from his job had left him struggling to find his footing. Yet, despite everything, there was a sense of detachment from my part. My focus had shifted entirely to my own family and the life we had worked so hard to build. John and I continued to nurture our relationship, finding strength in each other. Our daughter, Lily, thrived in her creative endeavors. Her YouTube channel remained a beacon of joy and positivity, helping to distract from the negativity that had surrounded us. Watching her grow and flourish was a constant reminder of what really mattered. One day, I received a letter from my mother. In it, she expressed her sorrow for the way things had unfolded and asked for forgiveness. Her apology was heartfelt, but I knew that mending our relationship would take time. I responded with kindness, acknowledging her regret, while emphasizing the importance of moving forward. Our family dynamics had been altered permanently, but the experience had also brought clarity. My parents' favoritism towards Isabella and the subsequent fallout had taught me invaluable lessons about resilience and forgiveness. It was obvious that time alone would not be enough to heal from these wounds. Understanding and a desire to let go of old grudges were also necessary. During those silent times of contemplation, I realized that the suffering of the past had strengthened the bonds within my own family. John, Lily, and I were closer than ever, and our mutual respect had grown from our common experiences. Our regular routines and the little things that made us happy provided us with comfort. As summer gave way to autumn, I started organizing a new project that would pay tribute to the knowledge gained and the family we had formed. I launched a community project aimed at assisting families in resolving disputes and forging closer bonds with one another. It was a means of transforming my experiences into something constructive, providing assistance and direction to those who might be going through same difficulties. I realized how far we had gone from those tumultuous days when I looked back. There had been a significant shift brought about by the altercation at our grandmother's burial, the revelations that followed, and the arguments on social media. Isabella's experience served as a warning but it also served as evidence of my own tenacity and the value of moving on in love. I felt a sense of finality when I concluded the story's last chapter. Though difficult, the voyage had also been illuminating. I was prepared to welcome the promising road that lay ahead with open arms. Ultimately, my family's love and the lessons I had learnt were what got me through. 
I realized that the future was ours to create, especially with John at my side, Lily's laughter making our days brighter, and the community project taking shape. I was positive that our family's strength and unity would get us through any difficulties that were ahead as I looked forward.